Well, today is World Water Day. It's a day that really highlights the importance of fresh water and the sustainable management of freshwater resources. So today we're honoring the most precious to all of us who live in Florida, the Everglades. After a century of human-caused disruptions to the natural flow of the River of Grass, urgent and multi-billion dollar restoration projects are right now taking place. Getting the water right is tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. Here's environmental advocate Louie Aguirre. It is the dawn of a new era for the Florida Everglades. After decades of planning, at long last, what was wrong is finally being made right. This project is critical for Miami-Dade County's resilience and its future. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. That's it. Tuesday, a groundbreaking for a new pump station at Black Point Marina off Cutler Bay. To restore Biscayne Bay, we have to get the water right. Right now, the water that Biscayne Bay is getting is not optimal. It is full of nutrient pollution. This, the final component of a 20-year mission to clean up the polluted water flowing from the C1 Canal into southern Biscayne Bay, redirecting it to hydrate three miles of parched coastal wetlands where nature can do what it's supposed to do. Basically, nature will clean it, right? The mangroves will clean it. They absorb the nitrogen and the phosphorus on the water, which are the pollutants. A slow sheet flow through the mangroves that will send clean, fresh water into Biscayne Bay and help bring back life that historically thrived here. This takes a canal, turns it into the mangrove marsh, 1,700 acres beautiful ecosystem that animals will enjoy, humans will enjoy, and it will protect this campaign. And the project plays a crucial role in restoring the Everglades. These projects are adding up and we're seeing the benefits uh, accumulating as a result. I witnessed those benefits up close when the Everglades Foundation took our crew on a tour of wetlands just north of Everglades National Park off Tamiami Trail east of Big Cypress. Life bouncing back where historic flows of water now been restored. This was part of that historic river of grass that was connected from the southern rim of Lake Okeechobee. Over the past hundred years, humans have disrupted the natural flow, dredging and draining the Everglades to make room for development and agriculture, farmland that sucks up most of the lake water and sends deadly nutrient runoff into estuaries and waterways to the east and west, killing acres of seagrass and the marine life that depends on it. Dumping water from Lake Okeechobee to that estuary and to the Caloosahatchee, it's, it's like a, a kick in the gut for those estuaries. But now, thanks to the combined efforts of the Army Corps of Engineers, South Florida Water Management District, and many stakeholders, Florida is finally on the path to getting the water right. Bottom line, you get the water right, you get the resilience right. Everglades restoration is our first line of defense against saltwater intrusion, sea level rise, and restores balance to our challenged ecosystems. In the past three months alone, we've seen major advancements. The Cutler Wetlands Pump Station, the Taylor Slough Improvement Project, and the crown jewel of them all, the Everglades Agricultural Area Storage Reservoir, or EAA. That groundbreaking really signifies a major leap forward in Everglades restoration. This 16 square mile reservoir will lessen the flow of dirty discharges to the east and west of Lake Okeechobee and restore the natural flow of clean water south. It allows us to take that water, store it, clean it, and put it back in the Everglades uh, where it belongs. It's expected to be completed and go online by 2032 and thirsty Florida Bay will finally get a drink. When we're sending more of that water south, we're improving conditions for seagrass in Florida Bay that really isn't getting enough fresh water. Cumulatively, all of these projects are giving our challenge ecosystems time to heal from all the pollution, restoring flow and balance to our natural backyard. When the Everglades win, we all win. So the more we add, the greater the benefit becomes and the greater the footprint of that benefit becomes. Legendary Everglades champion Marjorie Stoneman Douglas once famously said, the Everglades is a test. If we pass it, we may get to keep the planet. More projects are on the way. The federal government has earmarked a record $447 million for restoration. And this year, Governor Ron DeSantis committed to spend $3.5 billion on Everglades restoration over the next four years. 
got to pass that test. If you want to learn more about Everglades restoration or find a way how you can get involved, including how to attend the gala for the Alliance for Florida National Parks that I'll be emceeing next month at the Frost Museum of Science, scan that QR code there on your screen. It'll take you directly to the Don't Trash Our Treasure section on local10.com. Exciting to see these projects actually moving forward yes. with urgency and speed, right? It uh, really is. And we need that urgency and speed, Louie, because when it comes to getting the water right, we really don't have a choice. Water is the life force of, of everything. It is everything. It is our economy. Florida cannot exist without healthy, clean water. Such an important balance. Okay, thanks so much, Louie, for breaking that down for us.